This is Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything Stadia related, and today we have a news update. From new games releasing on the storefront to more buddy passes being given, all of that plus more in this video, so let's get right to it. So in case you haven't heard, Borderlands 3 is now officially on the storefront, in fact you can pick it up right now at a discounted price. Right now, the Borderlands 3 Standard Edition goes for $38.99 and is 35% off. The Deluxe Edition retails for $51.99 at 35% off as well, with the Super Deluxe Edition coming in at $77.99 US. Do note that the Super Deluxe Edition is only 22% off, so in reality, you're still paying full price for the Season Pass, so if you want, you can hold off on that one. Either way, Borderlands 3 is a game I, and I'm sure many of you, have been waiting to purchase on Stadia. In fact, this cooperative online shooter is a game that I was so adamant about being my first purchase on Stadia, so I'm super glad to see that it's finally here. Certainly look forward to a first impressions video and a review afterwards, but in case you're wondering, this game takes an average about 30 hours to beat. The game's also sitting at a very healthy 81 Metacritic score, so this isn't one you're gonna wanna miss out on. Now if Borderlands 3 isn't your cup of tea, well there's another game that came alongside with it, and that's none other than Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Now in case you don't know, this game allows you to relive that classic Dragon Ball story, but with a bit of a twist. You get to create your own character and work as a time patroller to protect those classic Dragon Ball Z historic moments to make sure the timeline doesn't get fractured. This game serves as a sort of third person RPG fighter that honestly speaking I found pretty addictive in the first entry. I'm pretty tempted to check this one out myself but it's currently priced at $49.99 US dollars so I may wait for a sale to hop in. The main storyline takes an average about 19 hours to complete, but if you're looking to get the most out of this game, you can easily spend double that, if not more. The game currently sits at a 78 on the Metacritic score, but honestly speaking, if you're a fan of the Dragon Ball series, I would go check this one out. It's certainly no Budokai Tenkaichi, but it still does what it does really well. Both of these games are available on the store as of 1217, so that means if you were to go on your Stadia storefront right now, you'll see them front and center. Still not enough? Well, 1218, Ghost Recon Breakpoint makes its appearance on the store as well. This is a game that I've been looking forward to releasing, not so much for the game itself, but because it's one of the first games to really use Stadia exclusive features. In case you don't know, Ghost Recon Breakpoint allows you to use Stream Connect to see your cooperative friend's viewpoint at the press of a button. This can lead to some serious tactical benefits and I'm really curious to see how well it works. As for the game itself, sadly it seems to be the target of a lot of mixed reactions and negative reviews. But it's not all bad news here because Ubisoft is committed to turning around this game and making it the game that everyone wanted in the first place. They've already taken many steps to make this happen and are currently being very communicative with the community about what's going on in the background. Now I'll be picking this one up simply because of the Stream Connect feature and I really want to cover it on this channel. Truth be told, this would be a much harder purchase to make but thankfully they're giving us a pro discount on this game too. The Standard Edition sells for 30 US dollars, Gold Edition for 50, and Ultimate Edition for 60. And yes, that's a flat 50% off straight across the board, so if you want all the DLC and digital goodies, the Ultimate Edition isn't that bad of a get here. As for those stats, the main story takes about 21 hours to beat, with the extras 45 and a half, but if you're a completionist, expect no less than 89. Sadly, the game's Metacritic score is sitting at a very low 57, but let's hope that they can turn this around. Now in case you're wondering, the gaming news does not stop there. In fact, we now have a release date frame for Spitlings, the upcoming indie game. In a Twitter post by Massive Mini Team, they state that Spitlings will be coming to Stadia early next year. Not only that, but it seems to be a Stadia timed exclusive, and honestly, I love the concept of this game, so I'm looking forward to it. Next, it's time to go over the pro deals that show up on the Stadia store. As some of you may know, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is currently being offered at 60% off, and joining that percentage discount is Grid and the Grid Ultimate Edition. 
And aside from that, Just Dance is also on a 40% off discount, so if you've been looking forward to either of these games, be sure to go check them out now. Also, on a side note, I need to know any of you willing to do a 40 player race for Grid, I want to set one up and now that the game's on sale, it's the perfect time. So if that's something you're interested in, do let me know in the comment section below, or better yet, join the Discord, it'll be on the pinned comment of this video. Anyways, let's get back to the news, and the next thing we need to discuss is another round of buddy passes being sent to Stadia Founders. Yes, you heard that right, if you purchase the Stadia Founders Edition and you go to your Stadia app, on the top left hand corner you should have another buddy pass to give. Now this is absolutely fantastic news and it's the correct decision that Google's doing here. Despite that, I'm seeing a lot of people say that this is kind of a desperation play, but that's just not the case. While Stadia certainly has a lack of a player base and lobbies are empty, if they really wanted to get a bigger base they would just release Stadia base off the get go. But by doing this buddy pass system, they're allowing more and more players in at a steady pace that they know servers can handle. On top of that, the thing I would argue that's most important to Stadia right now is for people to try it out themselves. Stadia happens to be a platform that much like VR needs to be experienced firsthand before you understand its benefits. I've said this time and time again and I really can't say it enough, your experience with Stadia is gonna be wildly different than mine. This is the exact same reason why you have so many YouTubers claiming that it just doesn't work while you have others saying that it runs flawlessly. Everyone's experience is gonna differ based on a variety of factors around your networking and your location. Getting Stadia into players hands is what matters most and Google recognizes that but they can't just open the floodgates without being ready for it. Either way, it's always good to see more people get their hands on Stadia and hopefully it'll help populate some of those servers. Now I was actually gonna wrap up the video here, but there's some more Borderlands 3 info that I think is worth sharing. So as it turns out, Borderlands 3 currently runs at 4K 30fps or 1080p 60 on performance mode. This really shouldn't be much of a surprise considering that Borderlands 3 currently doesn't run at 60fps 4K on a high-end PC. The more disappointing news for me has to be that the version of Borderlands we're currently playing on Stadia is a 2 month old build. Gearbox themselves have come out to state this fact and they've also stated that they're trying to get feature parity across the board come 2020. The more disappointing fact about this has to be that the DLC won't be available until sometime in 2020 due to this. Sadly the bad news doesn't end there, it also seems that the Stadia version doesn't currently support local co-op play like the console counterparts do. Now truth be told this is probably the biggest letdown for me personally. Now this is because of two reasons, mainly because it's a great cooperative experience to begin with. But the second reason would be really showcasing that Stadia has more horsepower than current gen consoles do. The split screen feature on current gen consoles is actually pretty poorly implemented and it lags a ton whenever there's a lot going on on screen. Ideally I would have loved to see the Stadia version include the stream connect feature to really showcase how it would work with couch co-op gaming. Google has already shown us an example of this with their tech demo at GDC and I would love to see it in more games being implemented. It would be something that really makes Stadia stand out and bring back that golden age of split screen local play. Either way, despite all this, I'll still be picking up the game as I've really been looking forward to this entry in the series and I held off for the Stadia version anyways. Gearbox has promised us feature parity in the near future so I'll be sure to hold them to that. I also have to admit, I was expecting to be paying full price for this game, I'm really happy they decided to honor the discount across the board and included Stadia in that deal. Anyways that wraps up this Stadia news update, if you enjoyed the video be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out and if you're wanting more content like this be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. As for today's end of video message, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who watched yesterday's end of video message and gave feedback on their thoughts. To my surprise, there's a lot of support for me talking about what I want to talk about and I really do appreciate that. 
With that said, I do want to clarify that the name is not changing. I will still have a big Stadia focus. I just want to have the freedom to discuss anything that excites me going on in the gaming community. Expect those videos coming in the near future, but for now I'll focus on the games that just dropped on Stadia. I'm actually super happy to see some new releases and I can't wait to give you my first impressions. The last thing I want to mention here is that if you own or picked up Grid on sale, be sure to join that Discord, I really want to get this 40 player race up and running. If that's something you're interested in participating, be sure to go to the Grid Text channel and we'll figure everything out there. Anyways, this has been Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything Stadia related. The Gen S community is over 3,000 strong and growing by the day, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.